Hello, it's Matt again for Guitar Nerds, and uh, I'm here with uh, Dan uh, from Cleft, and we are, well, we've got another uh, incredible pedal board to, to go through. Thank you very much. <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as calling it incredible. I don't know, there is a mystery box on an, the end. An incredible mess, maybe. Yeah, I, you know, they can't all be, uh, they can't all be neat and tidy, especially <laughs> if you take them out and about all the time, I suppose they kind of, as we yeah. said, they constantly change and... And, and morph and, and this is quite different to some of the other ones we've seen I think that's the great thing is that everyone here seems to have completely different pedal yeah, boards yeah I, I was noticing a few uh, similarities with Pete actually because he's he plays in a band uh, I don't think they have a bass player do they because he was splitting like a the bass end out and yeah, I yeah. kind of similar in fact with the same little box over there yeah I think he had a did he have a piece split as well yeah there's, there's a few a few common yeah. things you see but things like the piece split are really handy because you've got the ground lift and if you're running stereo it's kind of Super essential handy, really yeah and the isolated output is just yeah really so um let's you know let's talk through your rig but let's start with um the guitar because it's something that probably most fender people might not necessarily know about because it's yeah. a korean teddy right it is yeah. yeah um so it's i think it's a 2003 or four um it's, it's oldish uh, but yeah, it's Korean made. Um, they, I think Fender only put them out for a year in this state. Um, so unlike m most Fenders, it's uh, not a bolt on neck. Um, but so that obviously has its own effect on, yeah. on the tone and stuff. So you get a bit more sustain and it's not quite as um, like kind of twangy as a normal Telecaster. I think it came from the same run as they did one called the Light Ash because I think those ones have got the same pickups like a JB, Seymour Duncan JB and something similar I think I in those. I think it's, um, I want to say that's um, an SH1, is that the, they're both obviously Seymour Duncan. I think that's an SH1 and that one is um, a Pearly Gates, um, although I'm pretty sure that's slightly broken because it sounds permanently coil tapped. <laughs> um, which is actually really because the guitar's been this way. I've not done anything to it other than put really horribly heavy strings on it. What strings do you use? Uh, well, horribly heavy. Uh, it's eleven to a fifty-four. They're uh, early ball. Oh, that's not too bad. But I, I thought you were going to say like fourteens or something. No, no. <laughs> um, but I do play in standard tuning a lot, so you, you have to dig in a bit. Cool. Um, so, um, so from that we come into this this marvelous bunch of. So, talk me through the signal chain. What we're using and uh, what's in the mystery box. <laughs> okay, so that is at the start of the chain actually. So we go straight into uh, what I've called the auto wang. Um, so if you, if, I don't know if you can see it on the, the close. I think we might get some close ups later. <laughs> you might be able to work out what that shape is. I think <laughs> recognizing it. Um, so that's uh, a build your own clone auto wah, um, which is based on the DoD 440. Um, auto oh, the, the, the envelope filter, yeah. Yeah, um, which was. A think about 40 quid but it was a present from my now fiance which was very nice of her because she knows so you built that yourself huh did it work the first time when you put it together it actually did believe it <laughs> on it, and it had like it, the, the the schematic i don't know if, if anyone's ever done uh, a build your own clone thing but they kind of give you this really really uh involved schematic that you have to work your way through like stage by stage so basically it's kind of idiot proof uh hence me being able to do it <laughs> i suppose uh, so yeah, it, it worked perfectly, and you know, it's, it's got this switch on it, so you've got to either use it as like a, a kind of set filter, like a cocked wah, which I use quite a lot for like really lo-fi sounds, and it's really good to just drop uh, the volume out and lose all the bass. Um, and then obviously the normal auto wah setting as well for that kind of angry duck sound, which everyone knows. Oh, everyone needs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, use that on the tune we've got called Alec Baldwin's Hair, which has got the auto wah stuff all the way through it. And then we move on to the full tone ultimate octave, which I don't think they make anymore. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. I don't want to go on rack on that, but I'm almost I'm I'm sure I haven't seen it for a long time. Be worth some money though. I might. Go, yeah, keep hold of that. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't always make the classic mistake of going. Oh man, I'll just get another one. I'll yeah. sell it. Oh no. Uh, so that I use for a lot of the most like horrible um, kind of short sounds. Um, so anything that I need to immediately feed back and just squeal out I'll just whack that on for a little bit uh, and it's on a tune we've got called Gulch which has it as the main riff and it's just really horrible but really nice I only use it for the octave up uh, and the only reason I've got it actually is because of um, the Jimi Hendrix album um, uh, Band of Gypsies if anyone knows yeah, yeah. a few nodding heads in the room um, and he uses that on a strat and it just sounds mental and it just took me ages to work out what 
he was doing with it and it just turned out he's got uh, that Octavia which they've re-released a few years ago I think yeah I don't think he was using a full tone one no he wasn't <laughs> um, but uh, so that I just got obsessed with that tone and, and went and bought this cash from Anderton's and I felt like a, a real man that day it was nice because normally I just kind of kind of do stuff online and like oh it's all right it's not real money um so after the ultimate octave we've got the digitech hardwire cm2 overdrive which is my main dirt sound like basically every big distorted riff you'll hear from cleft is that pedal um they're relatively cheap but i kind of it's, it's become the sound of the band really like so i think sometimes though like no matter how much a pedal is is, is once you kind of get to you know, if it if it comes part of your sound, it, you know, it's, yeah. it is what it is, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, I've, I've been in the market for another drive for ages, but I just keep coming back to that, and it's just there's there's not much else out there that does what it does. I bought it almost exclusively because I had a, a, a tube screamer before, which I'm sure almost everyone has at some point, um, and I just found them very limiting and without having control of treble and bass, especially as we're in a two piece band. I'm, I'm the only actual melodic sound in, in the band so it, the bass end is really really important um, so I basically bought that knowing it was true bypass it sounded really really loud I needed something that was going to push the, the preamp of the my amps pretty hard um, and not necessarily have that much drive on it especially as I'm running tons of octaves which we'll come to in a sec so yeah and I, I, I mean that, as, you, as you were about to say I think you, the one thing we noticed is there's quite a lot of octave pedals around so how, how are you kind of using it um, in your setup, um, well, if anyone that ever sees us live, they'll they'll probably see me doing lots of. If I stand up without killing. Myself, yeah, don't 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 hit your head. Doing this, um, so later on when everyone brings their incredibly expensive loopers out, <laughs> um, they'll they'll probably cringe at the fact that I still do things like this. Um, uh, so I generally will kick the pog in and the hardwire drive at the same time um, which is just a, a massive dynamic shift um, and just brings in a lot of like low end girth um, and the pog's just the best octave pedal I've played in terms of because we do quite a lot of chordal stuff as well um, and it's completely polyphonic hence the name yeah um, and there's I don't know if there's many other pedals out there that do it um, certainly not as well as that one and it's nice it's relatively inexpensive as well again like m most stuff I've got is, is not really expensive um, and I just leave it I mean you can't see now because it's all uh, taped up so because I'm so regularly kicking these knobs and changing settings and it just makes such a massive difference mm. um, so I have the, the octave up kind of about 11 o'clock so there's a little bit of that in there um, this is about 3 o'clock the sub octave so that's like all the, the kind of low end balls and the dry all the way up as well. Cool. Um, and then what, straight into the OC2 after that? Straight into the OC2. Uh, it's like the opposite type of octave sound from that. It's just, we were talking about it just before we started this. It's kind of so like fat and synthesizer like, isn't it? Incredibly subby uh, octave sound from it. Um, again, fatter than most things I've ever tried. Um, and it tracks really badly and like warbles all over the place. So no chords allowed when that's on. Um, but it's great because, uh, as we'll get to at the end, if I ever finish talking about my <laughs> pedals, um, uh, it's just it's really great through a, a big serious PA system. It just the moment you stick that on, like you know something's happened, um, which is what I like in pedals generally. And then, and then quite an interesting one actually, the ring ring thing. Are you yeah. going into that next? That's 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 quite a cool pedal because you can kind of almost get some like tremolo and some sort of vibe sound yeah, out as well. Yeah, I I use that uh, a lot actually. Um, so I, I, it's an incredible pedal. Again, another one that I've not tried anything else that does all of that stuff because it does almost every type of modulation effect and get some really lush choruses out of it. Um, sort of like the again like a Jimi Hendrix kind of uh, like almost like a Leslie speaker emulation sound. Um, unbelievably horrible kind of robot being sick sounds as well uh, as all ring mods do. Um, and everything in between really it's also got an expression in which i don't use but i have done in the past and it's, it's you can get some bonkers sounds out of that thing so all of those presets are used in in various clef tunes and cool. the preset is is absolutely essential in fact that's my second one i think tom's got my previous one which we'll see later <laughs> awesome um and then we move on to the boss vr another boss pedal um 
again dis- discontinued are they discontinued now yeah. it's, a, it's, it's an awesome bit of kit because you've got the drive sounds in there as well yeah haven't you? yeah I've, again i've never really dug into that that much but they, they, it's incredible the amount of stuff that's in there really mm. um i use that predominantly as uh, like a filter rather than a wah because you can set some really extreme settings in it um so, which so i basically got the most extreme wah sound you can have which is like sounds like you're kind of knobbing about with a uh, a filter on a synth really so I do a lot of slower stuff with that rather than cool. kind of wanky wah stuff because I'm not really into that uh, chromatic tuner quite useful to you too dead old Is that does that go in between all the drives and yeah, delays is it yeah just smashed in there um, why not <laughs> um, any yeah. particular reason it's that in the signal chain or is it just kind not of where it fits or? yeah um, it, it's just it's useful useful to have it after drives quite often just to kind of kill stuff dead um i've not really experimented it moving it around that much okay. but um yeah it's i just find it very useful for lots of things really um so from there we go into the line six echo park um so that's the first of three stereo pedals so it goes stereo after the echo pedal. yeah so we're running um which we'll get to in a minute so we're yeah. running a stereo rig with with two amps as well that's it yeah um so echo parks the first delay pedal i ever bought actually um i've, I've got through quite a few but i keep coming back to this one because it's got this setting i don't know if, the, if this is going to come out on the camera but this that's called ducking and loads of delay pedals do that ducking thing where mm. like it's or they're often called like dynamic delay or something like that where you can have like a really really big long delay with like loads of um, feedback on it but you play a bit and it ducks to your level and um, we've got this tune called trapdoor where i use that a lot and i just leave the, it kind of permanently self oscillating but play over the top of it uh, and i've had the dl4 from line six and the um x4 as well from uh, tc electronics and they both have that function and it just never sounded the same it just yeah, I just kept on having to kind of go, oh, so I'm, I can't get rid of that delay yet. I've put it back on the board. So I've just decided that that's it. It can stay. It's uh, it's too good not to have on the board. And it's lasted so well. I've got, uh, that's That that was around before I even had a pedal board. So it was on the floor just getting kicked around. <laughs> so it's uh, it's pretty well built, apparently. So And then probably one of the weirdest pedals that were, um, was available. I think, once again, I think this is another thing that's now discontinued. So if everything, if you lost everything, I think you'd be pretty stuck. I'd be bothered, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, the, the Digitech Time Bender, because it does some, some weird delay stuff. It really does, yeah. I might I might do a bit later. Basically, it's got four presets as well. It's very similar to the Boss and Gig Delay. Uh, in the, the respect that it's got a few presets over there. In fact, I think it's almost the same size and shape. Bit of a lawsuit there, maybe. Um, <laughs> so I've got uh, a really bright delay on one. Two is like a really, really dark, very long repeat on it. And three is a wacky um, time, uh, not time, pitch shifting delay, which I think I'll do on the little bit we'll cool. do in a bit. And then four is like an instant slap back, so like a really percussive, uh, just one repeat sound which i use for a track called palette um and it's just fun to just whack on occasionally as well uh so stereo from there into there stereo out from there into the uh, tc electronics ditto x2 um which is obviously a looper for anyone that doesn't know them um and i use that i try to use it as sparingly as i can because there's loads of two-piece bands that just loop everything all the time uh, and I just know that I'm crap at it. So um, I try to avoid it as much as I can. But sometimes it, we kind of end up writing these parts into songs and um, it just becomes necessary. And I, I've gotten a lot better at it recently just through utter necessity of yeah. it going horribly wrong. Uh, and that, again, I've been through a few other loopers. Um, so I had the uh, Line 6 DL4, which is like a industry standard almost now for like yeah. people that do looping and, and use a lot of delay. Um, I found that incredibly unreliable um, and crapped out on me at lots of very crucial moments, mainly when you went to play the loop back after you just played it and it would just not do it, which was great. Um, so I got rid of that and then had the uh, Flashback X4, as I mentioned earlier again, um, which was a much more solid looper, but I found myself not using any of the delay functions. In yeah, it. I think that's so- sometimes when uh, companies put, um, you, you've got a looper in there as well, you find you use one or the other and you're not necessarily yeah. using both. Yeah, so it just, it just felt like a waste because they're beautiful sounding delay pedals, but I, I've always got, I always had these other two 
kind of more wacky ones and I, I generally prefer weird sounds rather than super like studio crystal clean because I'm running them into pretty nasty sounds. Yeah, so, anyway, so I was going to say, uh, talking about the amps, so we're coming out obviously into, into stereo and then uh, what, we're going into two, two so, Hayden amps? Yeah, so we come out of the, the ditto, we're going to the P split, um, which is very important because I technically run three uh, guitar feeds, um, two amps, and then out of the uh, direct out of the P split into this uh, Behringer Bass DI, um, it BDI 21. Yeah. It's very, very cheap and it's basically like a, a, a rip off of a, a Sons amp, but it's 20 pounds, not 200 pounds. Uh, so, again, being cheap uh, as usual. Um, so, yeah, that runs the front of house uh, or PA of, of some kind. Um, sometimes I find myself having to borrow bass amps at gigs that don't have. PA, but thankfully we're playing bigger and bigger shows that actually do have systems, which is nice. If you like that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> and um, then so and, and what? So um, and finally, then, what two amps are you running? And then we've got um, full Hayden rig loveliness. Um, we've got uh, the Hayden Mofo 30 over there, which I bought about six years ago, and I've been harassing them for years and years to try and get some kind of deal with them, um, which eventually paid off, <laughs> sort of. Uh, and then I've got the Hayden Mofo 15, the mini Mofo there, uh, and I'm running into two 1x12s as well. Cool. So, yeah, thanks very much, Dan. That's, that's awesome. So I think what we should do is we should plug it in and you should give us like three or four of your sort of favourite, most used wacky sounds and we'll take it from wacky there. Wacky sounds. Wacky that's sounds. That's all we ever do. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Cool, thanks. So we've got everything hooked up. We're running in stereo, so... Um, I don't know, pick something that you're going to do with it, some sounds that you're going to use, run us through um, what you're doing. Okay, um, so I'm going to do a little bit from a tune called uh, Dong 808, which is a stupid title, but we've you know, got to name instrumental tune something, haven't you? Otherwise it'd be numbered and that's just crap. <laughs> um, so uh, this tune, uh, this is like the middle bit of a tune, which um, has the pog on it, as almost everything I ever do does at the moment. And then we're going all the way through here to the time bender which I've got this kind of wacky um, pitch shifting delay <coughs> like this uh, and it goes like all heavy and stuff so I'll, I'll do that now cool That's yeah right. go for it Cool. So I need to buy a Digitech Time Bender. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so um, cool. So um, what else? What else are we doing? What else have we got? That's kind um, of uh, like maybe like a core sound on your board or something that you kind of use a lot. My main drive sound is this uh, the CM2 with the Pog straight after it. Um, what could I do? Maybe. That's awesome. That sounds <laughs> awesome. Cool. Uh, awesome use of the um, the sort of ducking delay, really, because it basically you can have loads and loads of repeats, but when you actually play, exactly, yeah, it cleans up nicely. I, I've not found another pedal that does that really. 
that as well anyway. Um, cool. Anything else you'd like me to go through? I'll tell you what, let's hear the let's hear the mystery box. The mystery box. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> if all my sounds work out well. Oh, I usually play on that pickup Sounds. Awesome, man. Well, thanks very much for that. So, um, so where people, where can people hear this awesome pedal board in action? And um, smeared all over the internet, quite evenly. Um, uh, we're on Bandcamp. All of our music's up for pay what you want. Uh, yeah, cleft band. No, just cleft.bandcamp.com. Cool. Yeah. And all funds feet go to towards new pedals. Uh, yes. Well, hopefully, none that I'll lose because I won't be able to buy them. Apparently. So there we are. Cool. So there we have it. Thanks very much. Like and subscribe for more videos, and we'll see you soon.